Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at DNA predicted appearance, traits and GD match results of a Bronze Age woman from Pakistan. Uh, this woman belonged to the Indus Valley culture or at least the periphery of this culture and is ancestral to modern day people of Pakistan and uh, other people of uh, India and South Asia. This is what she looked like. Now, according to Maina Shakoto, she's predicted to have brown eyes. Brown eyes instead of dark brown eyes, which is already a thing you should remember. Most non-Europeans are going to score dark brown eyes here, but she's scoring brown eyes for the majority. Uh, she's likelihood of snub nose is 72%, so likely had snub-shaped nose and black hair. What's interesting about the eye color is she had uh, one of the derived variants for BH2. He, she had uh, two derived variants for BH1, but that's no surprise, like East Asians, Amerindians, they all have BH1. Uh, but what's surprising is she had one derived variant in BH2, which is uh, the S&P, the variation that 23andMe uses to uh, determine eye color. And w This is what her, uh, her eye color with 23andMe would have been. So as you can see, there is some chance of her having green or basically non-brown eyes with this kind of a genotype. And uh, there is actually this idea, it's kind of like the dogma pretty much in the internet genetics community and it is that the BH2 mutation, the main mutation in HERC2 that has to do with eye color, uh, the light pigmentation allele there had come from western hunter-gatherers and western hunter-gatherers only. And if you have this mutation, you must have western hunter-gatherer ancestry. Well, this woman had this mutation, she wasn't homozygous for it but she had this mutation, she had the allele and she had no western hunter-gatherer anywhere in her ancestry. When it comes to her genotype in DRD2, she was not a no-go learner. The no-go learner mutation is a European mutation that basically decreases the amount of D2 dopamine receptors, and she did not have it. Uh, she was A2A2 for the TAC1 variation, which is typical a typical genotype for a human. Uh, actually, it would be very atypical genotype for a Neanderthal or any kind of a monkey. And uh, with, for the warrior gene, she was heterozygous, which is once again a pretty... Uh, pretty typical genotype for a European. It is also my genotype. I also am heterozygous here. And she did not have derived EZAR, so probably did not have uh, East Asian facial traits. And uh, she also did not have the European lactose persistence mutation. By the way, this mutation, uh, lactose persistence mutation, is an exclusively Northern European mutation, so pretty much nobody outside of Northern Europe has it. When it comes to polygenic traits, she had a pretty average risk score for coronary heart disease. She had a pretty average risk score for schizophrenia. Um, she also had a pretty average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, she had a very low risk score for type 2 diabetes. And um, she had an average risk score for Crohn's disease. She also had a very low risk score for bipolar disorder. And she had a very, well, a pretty high risk score for asthma. Moving on to GZ match, this is what she scores with MDLPK23B. Uh, notice how she's not scoring any archaic human, and she's scoring 1.5% archaic African. So I think I think that from the archaic African score, she's probably around 3% Neanderthal in total. And with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Vyalama, which is from South India, plus Kalash, uh, which is in Pakistan, and she's closest to people from Gujarat. Um, now, with the official G25 for this Indus Valley sample, we'll see that it's also closest to people from, from Gujarat, Gujarati people. I'm not sure if Gujarati here is Gujarati Patidar or some other uh, Gujarati caste. I'm, <laughs> I don't know. It's getting modeled as a mixture of Vela, Velalar plus Baloch or Brahvi, uh, which are people in Pakistan. So basically a mixture of very South, uh, very South Indians plus something from uh, Western Pakistan. And uh, here is her result with Eurogenes K13. Now it's a pretty balanced mix of West Asian and South Asian. But I know that the South Asian category here, the South Asian group, has got a little bit of Caucasus related admixture as well. And with the Oracle, it's closest to Gujarati people and it can be modeled as a mixture of, among other things, Velamas plus Brahwi, which is kind of uh, exactly the same thing as you saw with the official G25. Here is her result with Pond DNA LK10. Now, on this calculator, she's scoring around 40% Caucasus hunter gatherer. So she's got she's got quite a lot of Caucasus slash Iran Neolithic ancestry, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of Vilama plus a Makrani or Brahvi, which is kind of the same thing as what you've seen uh, with the G25. And here is her result with Pond DNA LK12. This is just more of the same, pretty much 39 or 40% Caucasus HG. Here she's actually scoring a little bit of European HG, but I think that's just noise. And uh, with the Oracle, she's closest to Gujarati. Once again, with every one of these Oracles, she's always closest to Gujarati people. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of, among other things, Tamil plus Brahwi, or I also see Kerala plus Brahwi. So basically the same as what you've seen with the G25. And uh, this is her result with Ancient Eurasia K6. The dominant components here are Ancestral South 
ancestral North Eurasian and Natufian, which are both, you know, Caucasoid uh, white components. So she's mostly Caucasoid. Uh, she's, that's why she had a Caucasoid appearance. Uh, but she's closest to Gujarati and she can be modeled as, among other things, a mixture of Caucasus hunter-gatherer plus Pania. And um, here, maybe the the amount of Caucasus is maybe overestimated here, but I'm not sure because I don't, I don't think she was 56% Caucasus. Uh, this is what she scores with Gidrosia K3. She's actually got a lot of East Eurasian admixture here, but the East Eurasian here is not uh, modern East Eurasian like with East Asian facial features. This is mostly from ancient North Eurasians and South Eurasians, so mostly from Caucasoid looking people. And, um, you know, she's closest to Gujarati people, and these uh, Indus Valley people were closest to Gujarati people, and Gujarati people don't really look East Asian whatsoever. Gujarati people look very, uh, very Caucasoid, very white, but like, like white but with darker pigmentation, you know? So thank you guys for watching until the end. You can actually download the sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video that I made here.